Oh, there, get my hand. Greetings, this is Dave Dickinson here from MasterGuys.com, and I thought I would show you something really neat. I'm here at Embry Riddle uh, da in Daytona Beach, and we're going to be looking today at the largest telescope in Florida. I just heard about this a few days ago while we were down here checking out St. Augustine, and I managed to arrange a quick visit. So uh, I'm gonna flip the camera around now. We're not up at the telescope. That is not the largest telescope in Florida. Those are a pair of Mead telescopes right there that they use for outreach here at Embry-Riddle. This is a control room here. Check this out. And when they do, they do not only public outreach, but they do actually do some uh, research here. They're part of the CERA consortium, which I have to look up exactly what that is later. But they can control the telescope, get live views from here. Mm -hmm. um, and there's the controller. We're here in the classroom, by the way. And we're going to walk slowly up. Oh, the size of the telescope? This is a one meter, which again, uh, it wouldn't be large if you were in Arizona or in what you're going to see here when I go up the stairs, a one meter telescope. That would not be large if you were in Hawaii or the Canary Islands or Arizona where they have these big uh, telescopes. But in this case, one meter is pretty good size for Florida. Again, that's... Uh, the largest telescope in Florida is like saying you're the largest mountain in Florida, I guess. Uh, but still, uh, this, uh, the, that they have a professional, this is one of the workshops here. This is not where the telescope is. Oh, I want to show you something. This pier is separated all the way down into the bedrock uh, to isolate out any vibration. This building was built with this telescope on the roof in mind. So we're going to go up one more set of stairs. Now we got a few more viewers. Anybody let me know if I got good signal or not here too. So, oh, we're getting a few more viewers. And here we're opening up the dome right now. They do uh, public viewing here once a month on Fridays too. I believe it's the first. If you go to their website here at uh, Embry-Riddle Daytona Beach for this telescope, they'll actually, um, here it is. Brand new, less than two years old. This is a one meter Richie Crichton, or Richie Creighton. I hear people pronounce it various ways. And we've got it open right now. Signal cut out briefly, but now good. Yeah, probably because I was walking upstairs. The school was gracious enough to let me uh, get on their Wi-Fi network here so I could get a good signal for this broadcast. However, sometimes it might have cut out when I was walking through the halls. You can see they, I asked them to, they do actually uh, plop in an old school eyepiece and observe here too. Oh, we got some more people joining. We got seven people watching right now. Nice blue day out there. This would be a good night, too. Good night to observe, incidentally. But uh, this is it. Largest telescope in Florida. Unless somebody can prove me wrong, I don't think they uh, could. There might be some amateur out there with something uh, bigger than one meter. There's a guy out in Utah I know, 72-inch uh, Dobsonian. He got uh, a spy satellite mirror from a government auction and built this. Uh, if you look at it on the web, it's... I. I'm pretty sure it's the largest amateur telescope out there. So this one meter is what, 36 inches? 40. 40 inches. Okay, so this is a 40 inch mirror on this. And yeah, it's, it's strange going like to the Yerkes Observatory and a lot of the older ones, which I like the old. Where in Florida is this again? We are at Daytona Beach. We are at Embry-Riddle University on, Daytona, on the campus on Daytona Beach. And again, like I said, they, they do do public viewing with this. One of the larger scopes, the one we used at the Flandreau in Tucson was a 16-inch uh, schmidt cassegrain a very old scope. Okay. Got a few more people joining. We're looking at the largest scope in Florida here, and he's slowing it around right now. Uh, this uh, engineer, Damon Burke, here at the university. And yeah. he's, he's slowing the scope around a little bit. Oh, we're getting a few more views. Tell your friends, we're looking at the largest telescope in Florida right now, and we're just slowing it around and checking it out. Again, this is a one meter or 40 inch. Um, it's a, uh, uh, DSM is the name of the company that built this? DFM. DFM. I know I've heard, that, heard of them before. In Longmont, Colorado. Okay. Yeah. 
it's so quiet too. I mean, the whole, the slewing on it. I mean, I've had uh, backyard, my uh, Schmidt Newtonian meat I had that it was much noisier than this when you slewed it around just automatically. But yeah, it's all covered up. And yeah, we're getting a few more viewers here. Does anyone have any questions? Anything that I, that I could possibly answer? Uh, astronomy or telescope related, of course. Everybody's being pretty quiet. We'll walk back around again. I could do one walk outside to show the piers as well. Um, we'll go back around here, back up a little bit. There, you get a good view of the entire telescope right there, back in here. Again, one meter, Daytona Beach, Embry-Riddle. I'm gonna try to do some more observatories as I, uh, as we travel here too. When was this built? I believe you said February uh, 2014, and it puts it's when it was installed. Yes, and then the mirror showed up in late June. Okay. Yeah, and the mirror was it was late June of that year. So this has been installed less than two years. Uh, so it's very, very new. Nice day out there too. It is. Are you guys going to do any observing this week with it? Um, I know it was being used last night. I don't know if any students are using it tonight or not. Okay. Do you guys ever host any visiting astronomers here like they would at Kitt Peak where they have to apply for time to use it or is it pretty much just in-house? We haven't gotten type? to that sort of Okay, that level, level of professionalism. So it's, it's still... Uh, Still mostly, uh, what are, I don't know immediately. What are these? Those are 70 pound weights, crank up weights, so that if we change an instrument, rather than having to remove, physically remove weights, we can just turn the crank and alter the balance of the system. Somebody, uh, D-Dunn 1966 says, look nice, I'm glad students get to use it. You get little comments here on, as people are, it's kind of nifty. I just got into periscoping here recently, so I try to do one a week or so. Usually if there's something interesting that we're actually seeing to, to kind of show my followers. Mm -hmm. oh, I guess we've got another person following. Oh, that's kind of nifty. Well, I'm going to walk down and attempt to show you guys the outside where the piers are, so prepare for the, the signal to possibly get worse. And you can see one more view of that. Everything's red lighted here. It's too bad I wasn't here at the right time to come at night to observe. That would have been kind of nifty, but well, you never know. We're still around Central Florida in a month. I do come over for launches over at uh, like the Titusville Cape area very occasionally, which isn't too terribly far away. In here, if you are interested, you can see our new detector. Okay. We haven't built the mount for. What type of detector is it? Uh, I think that is a CMOS detector. It has um, dark noise, dark current of one and a half electrons per pixel per hour. Okay. It's cooled down to minus, I think it's about minus 120 degrees Celsius. It's under a hard vacuum. Interesting. Yeah, I've never seen such a thing. See. That's, that's kind of nifty. How would this mount on the, is this like a, you'd mount it like at the main eyepiece or at secondary or? This would be uh, where the eyepiece would be. We're going okay. to have a whole instrument that attaches here. It's going to have a guide camera, filter slide, things like that. Okay. It's being machined oh, now. So it's like the cooling unit to it. Uh, this is actually a bunch of circuit boards. Okay. Electronics. Um, there is, this whole thing's under a hard vacuum. There's a Peltier junction in there. And we have a whole compressor and compressor hoses that run to it to keep it cool. Interesting. That's kind of neat. This, this is a very hefty mount here too. This is the very one that was holding one. up the, the CDK20 from Paramount that you okay. saw in there. We brought it in here to clean it up and get it ready for students to use. All right, good. Well, that's up on the older Newtonian up there too. And let's see what we can I'll show you where the piers are outside. And I think that, that'll probably be about it. So. If, if anyone has any questions in the next minute or so before I end the broadcast, now would be the time to ask. See, I'm not locking myself out. <laughs> Thank you.
and give this I may try to periscope the full moon rising over the beach here in a few evenings if it's not raining uh, oh connection was lost well it looks looks like I'm back I think because I'm seeing comments so yeah coming through when I came down the stairs probably the oh now I'm back yeah yeah when we when we went through the stairs and then back down the stairs well that's cool the broadcast came back automatically there it, it was just enough of the signal but um, okay that's the largest telescope in Florida you can see the the dome if I can get back here enough to give you the good exterior of the dome until some backyard observer wants to put up something bigger than a than a one meter that's the outside of the dome right there and we'll we'll archive this for posterity up on the YouTube later on and that's it so we're out